It's getting harder and harder for the media to ignore the Hunter Biden scandal, but they still do. Just yesterday, CBS reported over 150 concerning global transactions involving Hunter or James Biden have been flagged by U.S. banks for further review. Usually, these flags indicate suspicious potential criminal activity, but the U.S. Department of the Treasury won't release them to Congress. And just last week, audio was revealed from Hunter's infamous laptop of President Biden talking to his son about his business dealings back in 2018. Hey, pal, it's Dad. It's 8.15 um, on uh, Wednesday night. If you get a chance, give me a call. Not, nothing urgent. Just want to talk to you. I thought the article released the thing on online. It's going to be printed tomorrow in the Times. was good. I need to be clear. Quite a bombshell when you consider President Biden said he never spoke to his son about his business dealings. That was not true. So why isn't the media all over this? I think we know why. But the New York Post editorial board warns the compliant media can't protect Hunter Biden forever, especially if Republicans retake the House in the fall and legally compel the White House to answer these questions. Um, Harris, I want to play a little soundbite we have of Peter Ducey questioning the White House press secretary on this. Why is there a voicemail of the president talking to his son about his overseas business dealings if the president has said he's never spoken to his son? about his overseas business team. We're not, from this podium, I am not going to talk about alleged materials from the laptop. So I will, I am not, voice on the voicemail? I am not going to talk about alleged materials on the laptop. Are it's you not happening. Are you that it is not? Peter, I refer you to, uh, to his son's representative. It's Biden's voice. It's, this yeah, isn't a laugh. I, I mean, it's probably not a bad move for her because that's not in the binder. Yeah, <laughs> right. <it's not>. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure the attorneys don't want her riffing, and she's proven that without that binder, we might be in trouble. Um, God bless her. I mean, it's a hard job, but I'm just being straight. So I want to go back to the previous video where it sounds like the president says you're clear here. Yeah. What does that mean? Right. But like, what was going on that your dad has to call you? And what would after hours be you might be sleeping for Hunter Biden? <laughs> the guy's partying on Noon. YouTube at 3 a.m. Yeah. with all sorts of sorted people yes. and drugs. And the, that was like, what, when did he call him? He must call him at noon. But he's delivering some kind of a message about you're clear here. And then there, no, she, she can't talk about that. And if his staff is smart, they won't because they'll get pulled into some of those lawsuits. And then it gets to be messier. Yes. And, and we don't know what the truth is. What we know is that the laptop is something that makes certain folks uncomfortable, which is why other media don't cover it. Yeah, and one thing... Maybe they're on it. They're not on it. I, I venture to guess. But, <laughs> like, the Woodward tapes, for instance, those broke right before my press briefing. It's an analogous example. It's a tape of the president's voice. It would have been an untenable proposition for me to say, I have no comment. I'm not going to comment on alleged tapes. That wouldn't have worked because there were good reporters uh, like Phil Wegman here, who followed up and asked this. Watch. You seem to dismiss Peter's question about his conversation with the son, Hunter Biden, uh, with regards to his business dealings. And I'm wondering, how is that silence consistent with the president's promise to always level with the American public? I cannot comment on any materials from the laptop. And I would refer you to the representatives of, uh, of Hunter Biden. Todd, this was the one follow-up from one reporter. If every reporter in that room asked a follow-up, why won't you answer Peter's question, we would get answers. Right. Well, that's the difference between your experience and obviously the experience. Now, every single person in that room was in lockstep against you as a member of the Trump administration. Now, it's the exact opposite. Every single member in that room, by and large, when it comes to the Hunter Biden story, the third rail of American politics, mm -hmm. avoids Hunter Biden like the plague. They know they cannot ask any questions for some reason that we will I'd probably find out at some point. You know how we're going to find out? When we follow the but money. But we know the reason, because well, they all want a credential to be in that room. But Peter Ducey has a credential. <clears throat> he has the question. It goes beyond that. This is part of the cover-up that we saw in October to of 2020. With him, which is why, I mean, yeah. he cussed Peter out in yeah, public. Yeah. Like, yeah. he needs that foil. But the rest of the room, as you say, they, they got to be besties. So that's why... Or something like it. The next stage in this is following the money. We have Representative James Comer on to try and unearth more information from Treasury about these 150 questionable transactions. 
He's trying to get the information. Typically, this is handed over willy-nilly. It's not a big deal. Why are they Why are they blocking this? Why is Treasury blocking so much? It's because there's something to hide. Well, there's a federal grand jury investigation, Emily, in Delaware. That's right. And so that's a lot of the question. And the argument is that usually in grand jury proceedings, uh, after witnesses have testified, especially here so many months ago, then usually the prosecution moves for indictment immediately, or when the jury comes to that indictment level, they move for prosecution immediately. Here it's been months, arguably years, that we've suffered from delay. And, and the argument, in addition to questioning why, so the Justice Department has released a series of memos in which several attorneys general warn about election year sensitivities related to investigations and prosecutions. Mm. However, number one, there have been plenty of years we've been dealing with this right. that weren't election years. Secondly, that was clearly ignored back in 2016 when then James Comey was in charge of the FBI. Um, so I think that the questions remain as well that that conflict of interest is so superseding in terms of a fundamental paramount need for the the American people to know, it flies in the face of some memo saying, well, let's be sensitive to election time because that would totally impact how and why people vote. Second quick point, by the way, about her deflecting the answers. Let's support her generosity for a second. If someone asked mm -hmm. her a specific question about Hunter Biden, she says, I need to, to leave that, reserve that for his attorneys. The question was about the president's statement because yes. he was the one that denied speaking to his son about it. Right. It was a specific question targeted to the president's denial that then proved we think Think to be totally false, unsurprisingly, and that is the rub. Carly, that's the key point right there, because first Jen Psaki told us it's Russian disinformation, then she told us I'd point you to DOJ, now Kareen tells us, okay, go to Hunter's representatives, but it's the president's yeah. voice and the president's mistruth we are asking And about. at this point, it's almost comical that the president is continuing is continuing to stick to this lie that absolutely nobody believes. And keep in mind, it was a few years ago that Tony Bobulinski, Hunter Biden's former business partner, was on Fox News saying that, yes, Joe Biden was involved in the family business, and if he ever ran for president again, he would just use plausible deniability. And keep in mind, the reason this matters is national security. And the question, do you want a president whose son's business partners are a who's who's list of the world's shadiest mm. people, especially if Joe Biden, 10 for the big guy, was involved in that business. Is there, are there actual national security ramifications involved in this? A lot of questions. Uh, the press, got to start asking them, guys. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.